And thank you, uh, Principal Father Dr. Jason Paul and uh, Benedict Sir for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to address you. I hope uh, I am audible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So th thank you for this um, uh, introduction and uh, thanks for giving this opportunity to address you. So let me start with uh, presenting my um, slides and once I share it, then someone please uh, confirm. Yeah, so I shared my presentation. So one of you please confirm that uh, you're able to view, then uh, we can get started. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay, so great. So once again, thanks uh, to Father Jason, um, Paul, the principal, and uh, Binir, sir. And thanks for organizing this uh, event webinar. And I'm happy to address all of you. So the topic is um, industrial artificial intelligence. So when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence, um, as uh, Father Dr. Jason Paul mentioned, it's, uh, it's something that hot topic in the media. You will hear it uh, about uh, AI everywhere, you know, whether it's in the media or uh, um, you know in the in the consumer industry, um, in the industry conferences, and uh, everywhere it's in the the talk, right? So this is so the next one hour we will spend time to understand what's uh, artificial intelligence and uh, specifically to the industry how you are going to apply that okay so when we talk about artificial intelligence so the media what what the newsmakers are uh, this right so this is what which uh, you will usually hear in the media the tesla the driverless car uh, which uh, making news in the headlines say all over the world and then there is uh, the ai robot sophia uh, this also recently it was uh, in the media and um, everywhere the, the travel and um, uh, all the media is talking about how the artificial intelligence enabled uh, uh, Sophia robot is making the news and then if when it comes to the devices you know, the your phones uh, if it is uh, iPhone you have a Siri inbuilt artificial intelligence enabled personal assistant then you have Amazon Alexa um, then in the media, um, uh, we hear about a lot of robotic surgeries, the robot enabled, artificial enabled, artificial intelligence enabled robot, which is engaged in um, uh, specific uh, cases of uh, medical surgeries. So these are some of the newsmakers. Of course, there are many more, you know, the, you will hear about the uh, robots, uh, which are artificial intelligence enabled. So in, in overall, these are all, uh, we can call it as consumer artificial intelligence, which means, these are all either gadgets or uh, machines uh, pre-built uh, with certain artificial intelligence to do certain predefined tasks or activities. So a, a driverless car has artificial intelligence uh, inbuilt and it is expected to drive on the road by sensing the, um, the signals and then the sensing the different op moving objects, uh, sensing the other cars and then understand the speed and uh, take care of the road directions and everything so the, the the task is predefined and it's inbuilt same is the case with the sophia the robot um, or the city uh, or the robotic surgery all those are equipments or gadgets which are coming with inbuilt artificial intelligence okay so we are not going to talk about this because this is something which is uh, um, you can you will you know you you, you can google it and you can uh, listen from that and it's a different uh, set of artificial intelligence application so we are going to talk about how the same artificial intelligence technology can be applied in the industry so that's the industrial artificial intelligence right so when we talk about artificial intelligence it's a technology so right so can i can i how can i use it in the industry be, be it a manufacturing industry or uh, oil and gas or in a refinery or in a manufacturing um, or, or in a retail uh, online retail platform or even in agriculture or in a pharmacy pharmaceutical companies chemical process companies so these are all different industries or in a bank or uh, uh, insurance all these industries can you use artificial intelligence to solve the business problems to enable the business to for business strategies or making decisions so we are going to talk about that how this data science or the artificial intelligence how you can use it to in to derive uh, to drive the business to optimize the business operations 
to drive the business strategies, to understand the customers, their behaviors, all those things. So that will be the talk we are going to cover today, right? So when we talk about artificial intelligence, so the immediate thing comes into our mind is artificial intelligence is something super, you know, something big, something supernatural. Um, the, the image which comes to our mind will be a robot or a Tesla, which is not uh, something which is tangible in our daily life. Right, something which you don't see on the road or on the street or in your office or in your college. No, we are not going to see that. So, so that's one perspective we need to change, which means artificial intelligence is a technology, data science is a technology which you can use anywhere in any facet of your life, in any aspect of your life, even in, in any, any, sec, any segment of the industry. Right? So that, that's what we are going to talk about. And again, where can we apply this artificial intelligence? Is it in a big company, you know, big manufacturing plant, plant like your Toyota or, uh, or an oil refinery like your Lens? Of course, we can apply it there, but it's not just for big uh, industries or big uh, companies uh, or multinational companies. Even for a small retail shop or even for a small university or even for your college, we can apply the artificial intelligence. So it's all about data science. So if, so if you have the digital data and you have a volume of big data, and then once you have that data collection, we can build machine learning models and predict the future. We can take, uh, we can analyze the data. We can analyze the, so for example, if you, if you have uh, uh, the college, so the, the Jyoti College is in um, uh, existing for the more than a decade. That's what I understand. So, so you have the data of the students and the, uh, students' interest, your uh, behaviors, and uh, the future, the, the students who passed out, where they are placed, which company they are taking, which skill set they are acquiring, which skill set is in the demand. Once we have all this data in, in, in different computer systems, what you need to do is just get all those data into a big data platform, into a data lake, and then you can build uh, data science solutions, you can build machine learning solutions, deep learning solutions, NLP, computer vision, and then you can come up with predictions and futuristic solutions to understand the behavior, the trend, and how the, how the market is behaving, all those things, right? So, so, so artificial intelligence is something, it's not something supernatural, but of course the top technology as such is powerful, but we can use it even for a small problem, even to a small company, Provided you have digital data, right? So provided you have the data, and the uh, and if you don't have the data, you should have a plan to, uh, uh, or um, no, uh, maybe build uh, IoT solutions or um, have sensors uh, and collect the data, and you need to have a, a roadmap of collecting the data and going digital, and then we can onboard the artificial intelligence solutions, right? And then we talk, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it's a wide umbrella, right? So what what are the general um, technology elements which are coming in, right? So one is the, you know, of course, the machine learning. So there are uh, predictive analytics there, then the deep learning, translation, then the natural language processing, which we call NLP. There is translation, classification, clustering, information extraction, then the speech. So, so you can have a speech as the input and uh, you can recognize the speech and then you can do a lot of, a lot of solutions there. So you have speech to text, text to speech, right? And then the expert system, then the planning, scheduling, optimization, especially if you are in a manufacturing plant, if you are in a shop floor, if you are in a, a company like Maridi, the car manufacturing, where you have a uh, scheduling need, you need to have a production planning, you need to optimize your production, all those things are possible. Then there is robotics. We already spoke about uh, the, the Sophia robot, and then um, even in uh, mine, mines, or even in uh, medical healthcare, or even in many dangerous. Uh, um, feel like a, a, a steel furnace uh, where there are uh, dangerous uh, uh, hu human activities which you need to do. You can have a robot which is artificial intelligence enabled who, will, who can do a certain set of predefined um, uh, um, tasks and uh, you know, the, which has uh, artificial intelligence enabled. It can think through and it can uh, react to the situations and uh, it can execute certain tasks. Then the image recognition. Um, so computer vision, uh, so you can have uh, um, you know, image recognition, you can have video analytics, all those things are different uh, technologies which are coming under the big umbrella of artificial intelligence uh, and intelligence. Okay. 
so i'm not going to talk about each of this technology area so what i will uh, that's something probably you, you know you will you will study in a data science course or you, you know you can study in a, uh, outside this session but i'm going to talk about how you can take this uh, technology and apply in the industry and how it can give you the business value then you will be able to <coughs> appreciate and understand the importance of this technology okay so so before we get into that so i want to take a step back and uh, look at the artificial intelligence so if you, you know, when we study in the school you now we studied the um, in the history we studied the uh, agriculture revolution right which happened many centuries back where the humans were um, organized into organized farming so people were doing the farming so they were uh, uh, the civilizations were there and then the 13th century 14th century period so people were doing the farming manually right so all the task which people were doing what you see in the in the picture uh, everything was done manually so you have to dig the earth and then you have to plant the trees you have to water it manually you bring the water manually and then do every task is done manually and then came the industrial revolution in the uh, uh, in the 15th 16th centuries uh, where the industrial revolution came that is the result of the inventions of uh, artificial power the machineries were invented which are driven by steam power fossil fuels the, the electricity uh, petroleum uh, steam all these artificial power was invented and then lot of machineries so first the steam engine was invented and the uh, uh, petrol driven the petroleum driven automobiles the machineries were uh, invented then the electricity was invented so all these inventions triggered the industrial revolution and whatever we see today as a humanity the 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 civilization what we see today everything is a result of industrial revolution so you have machinery for everything you go to your kitchen you have machine for um, grinding you have machine for washing for cleaning everything you have a machine you go to a factory uh, you, um, you know people are operating different machines power presses or uh, extrusion machines and all kind of machinery and you you go, go into a road you have n number of machine the cars are running the cars bike and if you have to travel from satrichur to kochin you don't have to walk anymore you can take a car, cab or you can take a bike and uh, you, know, you can just drive and go so so what the, so what, what it means is your effort is reduced and your life is improved because of the artificial power right so all these machineries helped human to evolve humanity to progress advance and our whatever of effort what you see in the picture you know the, the farming is done by machine a, a tractor right so it's not done anymore uh, with uh, a, a bullock cart or a, you know a, with animals or with uh, human effort so there is a machine which is running which is helping the humans to do that right and then so, so for example if you have to bring water to um, one place earlier we had to carry in a, in a, in a bucket or uh, you know in a drum you you carry the water now you have a water pump you just and which is powered or which is driven by electricity so you have the artificial power which is driving the in the a machine which is a pump and you get water in a tap without human effort right so that's how the industrial revolution or the invention of artificial power has changed humanity now just imagine you put a brain you put an artificial intelligence to that pump you will get a smart pump which will think and decide when to start how much water to pump how, what is the water level in the source and what is the water level at the uh, uh, destination tank and then based on all this data it can think and it can decide how much water to pump and when to pump everything so you are putting an artificial intelligence to that machine and it becomes smart pump right so earlier if you have to say now today if you have to say bring 100 kg of cargo or some item from kochin to trichur what you will do is uh, if it was uh, say 500 years back you 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 need five people to travel from kochin and walk carry this uh, 100 kilo um, k, uh, of cargo maybe 20 kilo each on their shoulder and walk to trichur which may take one or two days right so that's a story 500 years back but now you have an automobile so to carry uh, 100 kilos of uh, cargo you don't need five people to travel to kochin so you just need one person who is driving a, 
a, a lorry or a mini tembo who can put all this 100 kg of cargo in a lorry and he can drive it from kochi to trichur and he can probably reach in 2 hours or maximum 3 hours right so the effort is reduced the human effort is reduced your human comfort is increased productivity is time is reduced your productivity is improved all that now when you travel when you are carrying this uh, cargo in a in a lorry uh, or in a car 100 kilos from kochi to uh, trichur you put an artificial intelligence to that machine that car then it becomes a driverless car so you don't need one person also to go right so it is not going to happen it's not happening today but maybe after 10 years or after 20 years you will have automobiles which is taking the load from kochi to trichur and driving it on its own without a human intervention and it will bring the cargo here right so you have a, so so you have artificial power so first it was manual power then the industrial revolution brought in artificial power and now you have artificial intelligence which is making it a smart car or a smart pump right so that that's the power of technology so it's going to bring in the new industrial revolution which people call it industry 4.0 right and this is the in the beginning of the era and you guys just starting your career and you are at the right point of your uh, history where you are you can, you have all the power to create history using artificial intelligence right so your future is going to be everything will be cognified when i say cognified everything any every machine every aspect of the task which humans are going to do everything which you see in the in the society in the world will be there will be intelligence automation Uh, the artificial intelligence which will be added which is going to make our life lot more easier optimized and better that's the future and you guys the engineers who are here starting your career probably in the next couple of years you are at the right time slot or, or at the right opportunity in the history of humanity you can create history using artificial intelligence so all the best to all of you guys right so let, let's go through some of the use cases where can you i will take some of the cases and explain how you can ar- use artificial intelligence in the industry okay so this is a, a typical case of uh, uh, power generation so electricity generation so you know that if you go to idiki power generation or many of the hydro electric plants you have a generator there and then the another uh, you know, so there will be many many generators so what happens is suddenly when there is a failure in the generator there will be power breakdown right there will be power failure downstream and um, it is going to create problem for lot of problem so predictive of uh, predicting the power, power uh, predicting the um, equipment the critical equipment whether it's a generator or any of the critical equipments predictive maintenance is a very good use case where you can use the artificial intelligence so the machine learning models you can build using the um, so you can build predictive algorithms using machine learning so what you need is uh, so identify the critical machinery whether it's uh, in a in a power generation plant it will be a, a generator or if you go to a refinery it can be a reactor uh, you go to a mine it can be um, a, a, a heavy equipment which is carrying the um, you know uh, digging the um, ore in the in the deep um, uh, underground or you go to um, a refinery um, Uh, i mean or, or you go to a steel manufacturing where it can be a blast furnace or a basic oxygen furnace where you will have so identify that critical machinery and then identify the critical components which is going to which which can fail and then you collect all this data so you collect the historical maintenance data um, then the historical real time maintenance data the life span analysis model personal correlation and all this historical data and then the the, the different uh, Uh, real time data like the pressure the the fluid liquid uh, you know whatever the fluid is there the temperature pressure the rpm the vibration uh, the corrosion uh, the water head all this data collect all this data bring it into a big data platform build a machine learning model and then you can predict when this particular uh, piston is going to fail when this particular uh, um, uh, um, uh, propeller is going to fail right and then when when this need replacement so you don't need to wait for that particular propeller or that particular piston to fail or break down so that you get you can predict it in advance and then you can proactively go and replace that right so the life span analysis model pearson correlation so i'm just running through all this so these are all each of these use cases and you know, we can talk about that for hours together 
how we will build the machine learning model all that you know it's it, so um, you know, that that's something which we can go deeper maybe at a different time but this are this is where a predictive maintenance solution in every industry you will see it. so that's going to be one of the big big use case for the artificial intelligence okay so what what are you going to achieve from this say this is a typical case of a hydroelectric project what what is hydroelectric project so so where you will have a generator and then um, the refinery um, so you will have all the real you know uh, data set you no know, uh, see i mean the streaming data streaming the time sensor data maintenance data historical data equipments of equipments then the what are the chemistry or the metallurgy of the different components all this data which you collected through a uh, stream sort data and bring it to a big data platform and then you build machine learning models and then you can predict when the maintenance is required when a particular component can fail when it when you need a replacement of that particular component or when you need a lubrication when you need a, um, um, a predictive when you need a shutdown for a particular component or a replacement all this can be predicted in advance and you can do proactive maintenance and even you can optimize your uh, operation so you know that okay this particular uh, component can fail if the temperature or working temperature goes the, goes up from 150 degrees celsius to 250 celsius and you can say this with this particular uh, steel say uh, stainless steel 316 grade uh, it can work only you know between a temperature of 100 degree to 180 degrees celsius right so all this you can predict and you can even give that data back to the design department and say that this particular component need to be built with a different grade of steel and then which to optimize the operation so all this you can do using the predictive maintenance machine learning solution okay so next we will uh, go to another industry so this is something which uh, we are doing it in a bank so as I, as we told um, in the beginning so i am heading an um, uh, artificial intelligence lab for one of the multi multinational banks in the south asia so where we have uh, operations in 16 countries so we develop uh, solutions machine learning artificial intelligence solutions for the bank to deploy it on all these countries so a typical case i will talk about a typical case so uh, last month uh, i was in an important office meeting where i was uh, discussing in in, a, in a, with some of the executives and um, some of my boss um, superiors were there and we were having a serious meeting and suddenly i got a call on my phone okay and um, i took the phone um, i i accepted the call and then suddenly there was a lady she's asking do you want a personal loan okay so this is the typical calls which i am sure all of you are getting all of you will get you know you may be in the middle of an exam or you may be in the middle of a important meeting where suddenly you will get a call from someone unknown person and then they will ask they will spam you right it's a literally spamming you they will ask you for personal loan they will ask you for credit card they will ask you for home loans and all these things right so this is a typical problem every bank in india is doing and we have solved it using artificial intelligence okay so we have built multiple machine learning models to understand the customer preferences so we have 16 million customers spread across seven countries um and we have built um, um we, we have built machine learning models to understand the customer preferences what is their interest what are the products so so i will i will go to the next slide so so for a banking what are the common products right so when we talk about a common products so banks have a credit card home loans auto loans then the belt products so you uh, then some of the um uh, savings account the um, uh, current account all these products are there so what so so as a customer so if i am a customer the problem is that the bank doesn't know so in the in the earlier story where i told when someone is calling from my bank to me so 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 the funny thing is that i have my salary account this with this particular bank for the last 14 years and every month my salary is coming to this bank and i have a home loan running with this uh, bank and i am paying my uh, emi every month still they are calling me for personal loan for two months i mean 2 2 lakhs rupees and i already have more uh, more than 10 times of that amount in a fixed deposit in the same bank and they still don't know so that's a typical case of a bank uh, they, they don't know anything about you and they will ask you for a wrong product they will promote a wrong thing at the wrong time um, and they, they will harass you they will spam you 
and if you if if I, when I, whenever we open our email uh, at least there are four to five emails from different banks asking for all these promotionals and you get sms uh, at least four to five sms every day from the banks asking for personal loan home loans credit card all these things right so all this spamming we have stopped so we have analyzed the pro, uh, the customers and we, we built a multiple machine learning model so so whatever i'm talking about now if, so forgive me if um, you don't understand so i don't want to go into deep technical so these are some of the machine learning models so the logistic regression random forest k nearest neighbor xg boo so we built multiple machine learning models to understand what is the customer each each person so we came up with personalized service for each customer so if i am matthew what is my interest what is the product i want to buy what are the products he is holding okay i hold a savings account and i have a credit card i have a debit card and i have a home loan fine so then what next he is likely to buy is he like, likely to invest in some fixed deposit or is he likely to invest in some shares some wealth products so all this is is analyzed by machine learning models and then we send personalized recommendation to the customer not spamming everyone with everything so they know, so with all this uh, machine learning solutions we know that this particular person matthew knows he is likely to buy a auto loan or he is likely to buy a home loan and then we send him that recommendation and again we are not going to send you call you at the wrong time so we identify what is your preferred channel when i say channel so the in, if you are in a digital marketing you will understand that so the channels are they have different channels so you have web channel you have sms you have emails you have phone calls you have uh, a mobile app so these are all different digital channels so which channel is preferred by me right each person has a different interest and at what time i want to i am okay to receive this message from a bank so i am okay to receive a bank a message from the bank at uh, say between 6 pm to 8 pm in the evening i don't want to receive a phone call from the bank at uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the daytime when i am in office right so everybody has your own preference so we and we analyzed all these preferences and then based on the machine learning model recommendations we are giving the recommendation to each customer which is the right product through the right channel at the right time okay so that's a, so if you are in the banking industry or if you are in the marketing you will understand so this is a, this is a huge uh, um, you know game changer and a huge uh, um, um, solution big solution from a customer experience point of view okay and then uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence so if you, so since you are study students um, you may may not understand it but um, the moment you start working in it industry you will see that most of the it industry company most of the it companies like infosys or ibm tcs all these guys uh, everyone is talking about artificial intelligence and they all build solutions but the problem is most of them are selling in nuts and bolts which means they are all selling artificial intelligence solutions data science solutions pre built solutions small pieces to solve small problems but what we are doing is so i want to uh, talk about that because that's that's a next big thing where you transform the entire business using ai you transform the entire business end to end right for defining the business strategy how can you can you uh, define the business strategy so any decision which is taken by in our bank any decision which is taken by our ceo or the products head in the different countries all driven and recommended by the the different ai solution which are built by us so it's a decision management so to for the cxos for the ceos for their decisions and strategy okay so we understand we, we analyze the customers we analyze the product portfolio and then we come up with personalized services and products for each person based on your interest based on your uh, timing everything okay so that that's the power of artificial intelligence you can take it to any industry and you can personalize it and transform the way business is operating okay so this is another story growth story i want to talk about so as i said uh, our bank is operating in 16 countries and uh, two years back we expanded to another country in the south asia okay so this particular country uh, since it is uh, confidential I, i don't want to talk about uh, more de- uh, no, more details of it but i will definitely talk about the uh, story line which uh, we have done so this is a uh, country young country which means the population is younger um, and then the majority of the people are in the youth and then the mobile penetration is uh, you know very high and most of the people who are doing uh, mobile uh, 
uh, transactions and they are all from everyone has an internet connection so when we wanted to expand to that country we had th different three options so one was uh, say for example if the city bank uh, from um, abroad they want to start in india what they do is uh, they will probably uh, start uh, you know looking for offices or banks or branches in the different uh, key cities whether mumbai or uh, delhi chennai bangalore kolkata so they will go to those cities and uh, lease out uh, uh, offices in the prime centers right and then they will start branches there so that's how city bank came to india you know few few um, some years back so that need heavy investment and it is going to be a long journey the second option is you can come to india if you are a multinational bank you can come to india and acquire a small company a small bank probably south indian bank or uh, punjab national bank or bank of baroda or you know, some of, some of the indian banks that also you need heavy investment right so what we have done is instead of doing all that we acquired the data customer data of a fintech company wallet company so fintech when i say fintech uh, some of you may not be familiar with the, the word fintech it's like a paytm you know you 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 may be familiar with paytm right the mobile wallet so Pay, paytm is a fintech so Pay, paytm if you are a paytm customer you will have they will have your minimum data right so they will have your name and your location and uh, so some kind of data where you will do some transactions in a, you know paytm you are not going to transact uh, lakhs of rupees right you you probably will pay at your grocery store or you will pay at your petrol uh, you know when you are filling your petrol or small small transaction which you do so what we have done is we acquired the fintech uh, let data uh, 1 million customers data and then we built multiple machine learning models to understand their customer we predicted their income predicted who is rich and what what is their propensity to save and what products they will buy and what are their interests we came up we built multiple uh, solutions there and then within 14 months we have grown from 0 to 2.4 million customers in that country and the the funny thing is that and the reality is that this is a 100% digital bank we do not have any branches in that country we do not have any atms in that country okay so this is a totally different business model so everyone is uh, operating their uh, um, bank account either through a mobile phone or from a laptop uh, digital so it is 100% digital so we don't have any branches in any four areas in the city, in the in that country in the city we just have one office where the data scientists are sitting and where we have our ceo of that country and some of the marketing heads the products heads are sitting there we have a group of 36 people just 36 staffs in in a bank in a country and they have acquired 2.4 million customers within 14 months that's, that's the power of artificial intelligence okay so that's what you can do the provided you get the data okay so the that's why we say data is oil data is the new oil and data is powerful i'm sure that all of you are familiar with the the political uh, no, uh, debate which is happening related to the sprinkler right how uh, in the no, i don't want to get into the details of that but believe me if you get the data you can do wonders you can do lot of things with that and you can build big business with just data if you just know how to use that data and how you can build uh, ai solutions and you can analyze the trend you can analyze the customers you can analyze their behavior uh, their propensity to save their everything and then you can just build a business out of the raw data okay so that that's the power of data and this is the true story which we have done just last year okay so this is another um, use case uh, which we have done for the again for a bank so so what what's a bank so when we talk about uh, so when we talk about a bank uh, you know you know what what's familiar will be probably you know, state bank of india or a south indian bank or sdfc bank so the what comes to our mind is a big office in the city uh, where they will have a bank office and uh, if you have to do a open an account you go there Uh, take a token stand in the queue with uh, you take all your uh, kyc documents your id proof address proof your photo everything and uh, you probably need a half day time to open an account and every time if you have to do a transaction you have to get a credit card or you have to get a home loan or you have to get a bike loan car loan anything you again you have to go through the entire pain of 
doing these things so what's a bank for us so probably for a bank is people you know the especially the staff those who are working they will know that a bank for them is a, a place where you get your monthly salary and you have a debit card you have an atm card i mean you have a credit card and you can whenever you want money you can um, go to atm and withdraw that and whenever you want to do a transaction you can either do a digital online transaction or from your mobile bank right that's it so it's very limited so we have changed the way a bank is operating okay which nobody has done it till now so what we have done is using artificial intelligence we built a mobile app and then we built many underlying machine learning solutions which give which transform our bank into a financial partner for each customer so we analyze the interest and the behavior of every customer we analyze their background what is their interest what are their purchase behavior what do what do they like what is their uh, hobbies uh, what they want to work, where they want to invest what how they want to spend their money everything and now the bank is our bank is a real time partner for uh, each customer so i'll tell you how it works say for example to, today you are in kochi trishur and tomorrow you want to go to kochi right so you have your mobile app your phone where your our bank app will be installed right so the moment you reach uh, kochin we will know your location through geofencing okay so we understand you are, that you are in kochin and we understand that so using all our previous analysis with your historical data and your data in the social media the data which you uh, by your online purchase behavior everything with that we we have your profile we know that you uh, during lunch time we will know that okay you are you are interested in chinese food okay so with your previous spending using your credit card you every time you go to a restaurant we know that you are buying uh, chinese food you are going to, going to a chinese restaurant so we know that you like chinese food and the moment you are in mg road we will get, give you a recommendation saying that there is a nearby restaurant uh, half kilometer from your location and uh, uh, which is giving you chinese food and uh, as a as a customer uh, we already have tie up with all these uh, merchants whether it's a restaurant or a cinema hall or, or uh, online shopping or different uh, retail stores everywhere uh, it is uh, gone mute is is so 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 we have, we as a bank have uh, hey, please uh, go on mute so, so as a bank we have uh, with all the merchants and every any places where you are likely to buy or likely to spend okay so when you, the moment you are in cochin and when the moment you are in mg road we will give you a recommendation on a push notification on your mobile app saying that there is a restaurant half kilometer away from you where you can have go and have your favorite chinese food and we since we already have a tie up with that restaurant we will we, hey guys please don't mute uh, so as you have a tie up with uh, as we have tie up with uh, um, your friend uh, um, we will give you probably a 15% or 20% discount for you okay and then after lunch uh, the moment you the moment you after after lunch uh, hey please uh, don't mute there is lot of background noise okay thank you so after lunch you walk, walk on the mg road and then you probably want to do some shopping and be, and since we have all your previous historical purchase behavior we know that what what are the items you are likely to buy probably you were likely to buy some sports items or you are likely to buy some fashion and dress with all your uh, historical purchase behavior we will give you the right recommendation so we will tell you that there are there is a sports uh, goods shop um, next to uh, no uh, half kilometer away from you and we will tell you which floor it is and uh, um, which are the items which uh, no, probably earlier you bought some cricket bat and then you uh, you want to buy a helmet or you want to buy a cricket gloves we will give you the recommendation and then the moment you go to that uh, uh, store you will get say 15% or 20% discount because we already have a tie up with you and then in the evening when you you want to uh, we know that from your uh, previous historical data we know that you like uh, hindi movies or you like malayalam uh, you know, comedy movies so the moment you in the evening when you are likely to uh, watch a movie we will give you the recommendation saying that there is a uh, comedy movie of mohanlal which is running in this theater which is just half kilometer away from you 
and you can go there and then we as a customer since we already have a tie up with the uh, movie theater we will you will get a 15% or 10% discount there okay and then this these are these are these are typical case of uh, when you you know spend your uh, money on a daily basis so other than that also if you have to buy a, a two wheeler a bike or a car or an apartment house all your requirements we already have a tie up with all these merchants and then we will give you the right recommendation so if you have to buy a car we will tell you we unless we already know what is your income how much is your credit history what is your uh, savings available all that data we know so we know how much is what is what should be your uh, budget right so you know that you, know, you can buy a, a car from say 3 4 lakhs rupees to uh, 4 crore rupees right so there are multiple options but which one you should be selecting so since we know already your financial profile and how much your savings and your income and uh, your liabilities everything we will recommend you and say that probably you need you can buy a innova which is say 18 lakhs rupees based on your financial profile and then we will give you the right recommendation and tie up with uh, car dealers where you you will probably get a 5% discount because we already have a tie up with you same is the case with if you are to buy an apartment or house we will uh, give you the right recommendation which means the bank which is a, a, a dead office which was lying in the some part of the city and where you have to go and prove your credibility with all your documentation and you have to prove that you are not a thief and even if you have a 15 years of uh, count with that bank you go for a 1 lakh rupees of uh, car, uh, bike loan or a uh, 1 lakh rupees of personal loan you have to go with all the kyc documents and all the documents and you have to sign n number of places and you have to do walk there, go there at least 5 uh, to 10 times in in a month and then you have to prove that you are not a thief to get a personal loan of 2 lakhs rupees instead of that we are giving you so so i will talk about the personal loan up, uh, uh, solution which uh, will come later so so we are treating you as a, as a partner as your bank will bank knows more about you than you know about yourself i will repeat the bank knows about you more more than what you know about yourself because the bank has already analyzed all your data all your social media behavior your purchase behavior and we have done nlp natural language processing uh, solutions and we we know what what comments you put in your social media or your review comments everything and then we know what's your behavior how credible you are and with that data we are treating you with respect and you will probably get a personal loan within 2 minutes instead of running behind a bank for one week or one month so that, that's a that's a game changer so that's a so so with that the bank is becoming your personal partner finance partner not just uh, somebody where you know who will treat you like a you know a thief where you go there and the, even the pen is uh, tied to a you know uh, with a, with a string you now they, they will think that you, know, you are going to steal the pen from their also bank so that that's a, that's a change that's a paradigm shift with the power of artificial intelligence okay again from a personal uh, customer uh, service point of view this is again an, again a banking solution so so if you have a credit card so suppose uh, somebody has uh, done a fraud on you and uh, you know you are done probably previously you had done some you know, previous um, i i i came across this uh, typical scenario where i had done some purchase online and then somebody done an international purchase using my credit card number which i had done earlier and they, there was a false uh, transaction false purchase so i had to go and dispute in the bank and then dispute this transaction they had done some 50 dollars uh, purchase so i had to go to the city bank and then um, you know uh, dispute that so that they will decline this um, uh, from the remove it from my monthly statement so so what you do is in such a case so somebody has done a fraud on you you call the customer care number so after five five minutes uh, no after so many tries you will get the number connected then it will ask you to press one for english two for malayalam three for hindi all these you enter that option then again it will say for one press one for savings account press two for credit card press three for current account and all these options again you enter that and then again it will ask you for your credit card number your date of birth you have to in the ibr you have to enter all this with all this difficulty after spending 5 to 10 minutes you reach the operator right and then the operator will again ask you for the credit card number and your date of birth and then the last three transactions to verify again that you are the same person you already entered that in the ibr but still they will ask you so this is the the typical um treatment or service you get in any bank 
right so you are already in a problem you know that somebody has uh, done a fraud on you and you are really tense and you are worried and you want you are going to the bank and they are going to treat you like uh, as if you are the thief right so we change this solution we change this whole problem for our bank using artificial intelligence so we build uh, different machine learning solution different nlp solutions and the moment you call with your registered phone number to the customer care the moment you call the call center person will get the call on and then he will get on his dashboard saying that matthew is calling and this is his uh, history with the bank he has an account with this bank for the last 14 years and he has uh, he is holding this this products he has he is holding a credit card he is holding a debit card he is holding some fixed deposit he has some shares and all this history and he has a uh, wife he has children all the details will come there and then the the operator call center operator immediately can have a personalized conversation with that person and then he, he so so he can even talk about his family because he know he has all the information about him on his dashboard in front of him okay and then the call center operator after solving the problem he will probably suggest you something better also no? because uh, i already have a credit card he will say probably you can you know there are some good uh, shares coming up probably you can invest there or you can buy the move this money to a fixed deposit or he, can, he will even probably recommend something better for you so from being a, a, a bank which is a, a like a sarkari office which is treating you like a thief we have transformed the bank to a financial partner your friend which is who is giving you right advice at the right time and he knows everything about you more than you know about yourself right so that's a paradigm shift for a bank so that's what we have done from a customer service okay and then this is another solution uh, which is called uh, alternate uh, credit underwriting again this is a banking solution um so if you if you are um, um, applying for a credit card or a, applying for a loan a personal loan or a two wheeler loan or a car loan you need a credit score right you need a civil score to get that approved so for example you have some credit card with the south indian bank earlier last four years and you did not pay some of the months or you defaulted the payment then what happens is in your civil score so those who are familiar with banking will understand that so there is a there is a company um, given um, um, there is a credit rating agency called sibil okay their head office is in bombay so they will give you a sibil score so based on your credit history so if you have done some credit card uh, defaulted in the past and you did not pay your sibil score will come down to say 300 or 400 so if you have that low credit score then you go for and apply for a home loan or a, for a another credit card you will not get that the bank will not tell you they will just reject your application they will internally check the your civil credit score which is the civil score and then they will give you the loan or the whatever that right they will approve that so you need a civil score somewhere around 800 900 range so if the score is below 300 400 you will not get it so the bank will just um, reject it blindly and then they will not give you the reason also that's how the banks operate so that's called the credit score so the here the business problem is in the in some of the countries like uh, 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 thailand and the philippines and uh, some of those uh, uh, south asian countries there is no credit rating agency and because of that about around 40% of percent of the population is out of the banking coverage so they are not able to do the banking so but that doesn't mean that they are poor right so the banks so the 60% of the population are doing banking so they either have a savings account or they have a uh, credit card or they have some uh, some relationship with the bank right so they will have some loans or everything so 60% of the population is doing some kind of banking but the remaining 40% of the people are not in banking they are not, they will not get any personal loan even if they apply they cannot get a personal loan because they don't have a credit score but these are not poor people they are in the village you know that in our villages also there are people who are doing farming they will have 10 acre land 20 acre land they may be doing uh, farming and uh, you know, they may be doing transaction 1 lakh and 10 lakhs lakhs of rupees cash but they are they are all rich people and many of them are rich people but they can't do banking right so that that's a typical business problem which we were facing in this country so what we have done is we built a um, uh, data science solution uh, using nlp and then um, using machine learning models and deep learning models we analyzed the history of uh, these people so 
we have a mobile app which will be installed on your mobile phone and we take all the mobile data your social media data all the data in your public domain your previous um, uh, history in the social media and all the media data we analyze and then we analyze whether your credibility and your whether you are uh, thief or whether you are you know, how credible you are and then we give an internal credit score and the moment you apply for a personal loan you will get it approved within 2 months i mean 2 2 2 minutes okay so with this just one solution we have onboarded 40% of the population in this country so which means all the other banks were fighting for this 60% of the population we took the other 40% of the remaining percent of the population we brought them into the banking domain with just one solution which is driven by artificial intelligence so that's the power of artificial intelligence okay so the industry that you take the industry you can you can you know redefine the boundaries of, of your enterprise you can redefine the way your business is operating you can redefine the um, uh, the way the customer experience for the for the industry right so that that's the power of artificial intelligence the moment you have data you analyze the customer you their behavior their preferences and then you give them what they want in of throwing them something so the future is going to be like this so then you will see more and more uh, personalized um, services you will see more and more personalized uh, products coming from every 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 company okay so this is another uh, um, use case which uh, we have done atm cash optimization okay so you know that uh, i'm sure that you know, all of you are um, familiar with uh, atm transactions and you, you know you withdraw money from the atm you go to the atm and sometimes the money is there you know you enter all your uh, customer details your pin and then uh, select all the options for you know your savings account you select uh, money for withdrawal everything you enter your pin and then finally say atm will send show you a message saying that it's out of service right the money is not there right then you go to the another Now you walk another half kilometer to find the next atm and then you take money from there so this is a typical case which we come across any anywhere in india right so this is one thing which uh, we solved using um, neural networks okay so this neural network is another technology uh, under the artificial intelligence so so we built a neural network um, and came in solutions to predict each atm at each location how much money to be loaded at what time okay so that that's not a simple you know, we can talk about it that in a simple single word but that's not going to be so easy okay because the atm consumption will change every day depending on the time depending on the month depending on the season um, maybe you know, if it is in the say, say for example if you have an atm in front of your college right the, on the college working days the money the atm consumption will be more weekend there will be nothing and if there is an atm in the in a commercial shopping mall in the city center in 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 trichur uh, city the atm consumption money consumption will be more on weekends because more people are watch, visiting the atm and then um, during the um, beginning of the month more more people will withdraw money um, during the mid, uh, end of the towards the end of the month uh, less money will be consumed and during festival times during holidays the cut behavior will change so all this there are uh, so many features which are which will define how much money should be loaded in a particular atm at at any location okay and for example let's say you have one atm at, uh, in a shopping mall so if uh, 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 just uh, 10 meter away if there is an, one more atm of another bank then this uh, consumption will again change so there are a lot of other parameters also features also which are which will define how much money should be loaded at each atm machine okay so this is a typical business problem which we solved using neural networks so what we have done is we built this machine and this uh, neural networks and came in models and then we came up with recommendation for each atm so there were some 7800 atms in uh, in one country alone for us and then we built uh, for every atm so even in in one room you know that there will be two three or four atm machines so the atm usage of those machines also will not be same so the, the for example the atm which is near to the entrance will have more usage and the atm which is in the last in that room uh, probably will have lesser usage so we need to consider all that 
So with all these uh, dynamic parameters and features, we came up with a recommendation and said that each machine, how much money should be loaded and in what denomination and how frequently. So that the moment you go there, you will have money and the in which denomination. So there are, say for example, if it is in a, in a city center or in a commercial area, um, where the more business people are there, people probably they will prefer the 2000 rupees denomination. And in a college uh, ATM, probably you will prefer a 100 rupees denomination, right? You you probably don't like 200 uh, to receive uh, 2000 rupees, right? So if you go, go and withdraw 4000 rupees, you probably need, want it to be all 100 rupees denomination, right? You don't, if I give you two uh, 2000 rupees notes from an ATM, you may not like it. But if you go to a, uh, city center where there are a commercial center uh, where there are more uh, business people are there and he somebody is uh, trying to withdraw 10,000 rupees and if you are giving all 100 rupees um, he will not like he prefer to get uh, 200 2,000 rupees uh, denomination of five notes for 10,000 rupees so all this user behavior user interest and their preference also need to be considered so we considered all this and then came up with a solution in neural networks for each of this ATM machine. Okay, so with this, there are two things. One is the moment you go to ATM machine, you will have money. It will not dry out any time. Then second is if you access, if you load excess money also, that is a loss for the bank. Say for example, if you you have a, in, in, in your college uh, inside the campus, suppose there is an ATM machine, and if the if the <coughs> is coming and loading twenty nine rupees in that machine, and even after one week. Uh, say all 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 your students together if they if you withdraw only two lakhs rupees the remaining 18 lakhs rupees is yeah, guys please uh, go on mute please thank you so the remaining 18 lakhs rupees will be dead money lying in that atm for two weeks right so that's a loss for the bank they can take that one is they are losing that interest on that second is they they cannot use that money somewhere else right so that's why we call it as atm cash optimization so every ATM machine, it should be the right amount. It should not be more. It should not be less. Okay. So it's not going to be an easy problem. So we have solved it using neural networks. So this is another uh, solution which we have done for, again, for the banking. Um, Andy money laundering. So if you are familiar with uh, banking, you will know that uh, the, the Reserve Bank of India has all the guidelines and then the India government has the guidelines against money laundering. So what people do is they will do money laundering. So there are different ways they do the money laundering. And then the government and the Reserve Bank of India has given the guideline that every bank has to comply that, ensure that their accounts are not used for money laundering, whether it's uh, domestic or international which means I, I should not be transferring money internationally or I should not be uh, transferring money locally from one person to another person, which is illegal. The money is, the source is not there or if there is money laundering happening. So typical case what happens is so they, in the South Asian countries, there is another scenario which is not uh, common in India. That's called mule account. So what it happens is um, if you are, a, say for example, you are a student, you go to Thailand, Bangkok and uh, no, many students go there for MBA and all right so you go to Bangkok to give you an example and you are a student there then the locals there some business guy there will meet you and then they will say that okay you open an account for me and then give me that account in your name I will use that for transferring money to some other country big money and I will give you a commission every month so you as a student will be happy you will get some uh, commission good money which you can use for your daily this thing, but illegal, it's illegal. If the government catch you, if the police catch you, you are in jail and that guy also will be in jail. So that is called mule account. Okay. So we need to identify all that. And then how this anti-money laundering is found out. So for example, you are a, you are a salaried person. Say for example, a professor in the, in the college, if he is getting say one lakh rupees every month salary in your account. And then suddenly, uh, the professor is um, say depositing, um, say, 10 lakh rupees or, or 2 lakhs rupees into the account today, right? Okay, one day depositing is okay. But if you are going to deposit 2 lakhs rupees every day for the next 20 days, which means it is it becomes 20 into 2, 40 lakhs rupees. 
right suddenly every day you go to the bank cash 2 lakhs rupees you are depositing today you are depositing tomorrow you are depositing every day you are depositing then that means there is something illegal so the, so the, the system in the in the core banking system in the bank will generate alert saying that this person his source of income is only 1 lakh rupees so he is supposed to have income of 1 lakh rupees in a month but the last one month he has deposited 40 lakhs rupees okay so there will be alerts multiple alerts happening coming to the bank and then in a typical bank there will be people who are sitting in a in an office who will analyze this uh, alerts and then they will call the customer they will try to find out why you are depositing he will ask you questions probably they will ask you to show the proof the source of income all that and then if it is okay they will clear it if it is not okay they will file a suspicious transaction report which will trigger a police complaint then the police will come in so there will be questions asked for money laundering okay so these are the typical this is one typical case of money laundering so there are many other ways the thieves will do money laundering so in any bank this money anti money laundering is a big problem area so in our bank one country alone we have 265 employees doing this analysis of anti money laundering alerts so they get millions of alerts every in in a month okay so from multiple branches multi well it's online transaction or digital transaction mobile app transaction or branch transaction it can be domestic transaction it can be international transactions all that they will get alerts and then these 265 people are sitting there and manually evaluating this alerts and filing some of them will be okay some of them will be you know they will call the customer they will uh, find out the source of the money and then they will clear it some of them will be problematic and then they will file the police police case okay so every bank is doing that so we were also doing that manually but we built random forest based machine learning models and then which will predict which are the cases likely to be anti money laundering which are the cases which are okay okay so with this solution from 265 we reduced our cut count to 48 okay so the effort is reduced drastically so that's a big cost cost saving for the bank okay so that's a big uh, Uh, solution which we built using an artificial intelligence millions of alerts we predict from say if there are 2 million alerts in a month we predict that okay this 1.8 million alerts are okay you don't need to so we are, we don't just uh, random say that you know we analyze it through all the customer behavior and all the multiple features the like the demographics the customer demographics customer product holdings then what are the transaction he is doing um the uh, poor his contacts what what type of transaction he is doing all these features we took it and we took the uh, we predict it and say that out of this uh, 2 million transactions only 1.8 million is cleared and then only 2 million i mean only 0.2 million that is 2 lakhs uh, transaction will is probably suspicious so this uh, from the 265 staff uh, we reduced to 48 and then that 48 people can evaluate they just need to um uh, investigate only this 2 lakhs of alerts in a month okay so that's a big cost saving for the bank that's again the power of artificial intelligence this is another uh, case which we have done again for a bank and this is uh, done in um, computer vision uh, video analytics okay uh, so face recognition so um, again there are two two cases say the moment you you are a um, customer you go to the bank we have the cctv right cctv is there in every branch so what we have done is we analyze this uh, cctv images real time and then we identify who is the person coming into the bank okay and then uh, i as i told in the earlier case if you are an anti anti money laundering so in every bank you know that no? so if you do any fraud with any bank there are some Um, watch list it's called the aml watch list so banks will have a watch list with uh, every bank and then they will the banks will share it between the banks so if you are blacklisted somewhere your name and your you will be black blacklisted so the moment you get into the branch office and if you are a blacklisted person by analyzing the cctv video we immediately notify the st- staff whether it's a branch manager or the respective staff or designated staff in the branch saying that this person he is a watch listed a suspicious person who is already blacklisted he has entered the bank so the staff can be more 
um, vigilant they will ask for extra documentation and extra verification so that he will not do any more fraud that's number one second is in every bank there are preferred customers so for example if you have a savings account and if you have a salary account you are just a mass customer and if, suppose if you have some 50 lakhs rupees deposit in your in your bank and then if you have uh, if you do a lot of uh, transaction if you get uh, some 5 lakhs rupees salary every month hold it then they will um, promote you to a preferred customer then you become a preferred customer so our bank has three categories of customer preferred customer prime customer and then the mass customer which is the ordinary customer okay so preferred customer and prime customer you the bank will allocate a relationship manager for you so they will give you a special treatment then you can speak to the relationship manager for any transaction and um, you get a preferred service so using this solution what we have done is if you are a preferred customer walking into the branch the cctv will uh, capture your image and our solution uh, our video analytic solution will immediately identify that so and so person matthew has come walking into the branch and he is a preferred customer immediately the bra branch manager sitting inside his cabin cabin he will get a notification saying that so and so person matthew has stepped in he has just came into the branch and he is a preferred customer and he can and the manager can give him a special treatment he can he don't need to wait in the queue taking a token and then wait for the caller to you know teller to call you after half an hour and all that you are a preferred customer immediately the branch manager will get the notification he will immediately call you inside your cabin his cabin and you will get the special treatment and you can finish the transaction immediately so many banks are doing that that so this is what we are done using this um, face recognition solution okay so we have uh, probably another 2 minutes so we are running out of time so probably this will be uh, will be the last thing so this is again we are done for the bank so post covid now every industry is talking about uh, cost rationalization right cost rationalization means cost cutting so this is a polished uh, um, um, term which everyone is to using na? cost optimization or cost rationalization which means they are going to cut their spending they are going to cut their um, marketing spending their campaign spending their product uh, spending they are going to probably uh, uh, remove some staff they are going to stop their hirings everything okay so most of the companies what they do is they just say especially the it companies they will say okay for the next two quarters no staff hiring they will stop all the hirings then they will stop all the increments um, then they will uh, some some people will stop the marketing expenses all that which is i would say committing suicide for your enterprise so what we have done is instead of doing that we have built we are building now this is something which we are doing it currently we are doing the artificial intelligence solutions machine learning solutions and deep learning solutions and different solutions to identify what are the customer preferences what are the products which are doing good which are the your services which are getting giving you more revenue and then we don't cut the cost there which are the products which are doing bad which are the areas or the business where the your uh, returns are low then we identify that and then we cut the cost there okay so we are optimizing the cost using machine learning solutions using billion solution okay so the, we, we so there are what are we are seeing here these are all in, you know, many, many number of solutions are built on each of this area so this is a high level view for the marketing expense and then the proposed deposit rates and branch cost optimization product management cost cash in hand all all that areas okay so with this i want to stop my presentation and uh, we will have the next uh, 15 minutes or, or 12 minutes we will have uh, for question answer over to you guys thank you sir myself webslin uh, i am uh, ashwin professor in jodi engineering college i am in charge of uh, sesa association thank you sir thank you for your uh, wonderful talk uh, i think all our participants get a wonderful idea about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, i hope they got a good idea about industry 4.0 uh, i think we can go for a query sessions so participants please uh, unmute your mics one at a time and you can raise your questions uh after that please mute your mic so that our chief guest can uh, uh, answer for your question over to you any queries yeah quickly one by one please ask so that we can save time so dear sir uh, 
I think we have one question in the chat section. Yeah. Some, somebody yeah. please uh, please read out that because I'm not uh, monitoring the chat. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. If someone recently opened an account and the bank has no information about him, how will the bank decide? Okay. Provide, decide in providing him or her loan. Okay. So, so what we are doing is especially that um, uh, ultimate credit underwriting. What we have done, uh, it's not the that doesn't only take the data which uh, you are giving with the bank. So we are taking uh, your um, social media data, your data available in the public domain, um, and um, your um, purchase behavior. Um, your even with the mobile app, with your permission, we take your uh, mobile data also, your call history, your uh, um, SMS text, all that we take. That, that's again with your permission and with the approval of our federal bank, we take that and then we analyze um, the data and then come up with um, the recommendation saying that, okay, you are eligible, you are If Prajita, please go on mute. Yeah. Okay. So it is not just the data which is uh, submitted to the bank. So for example, um, your data is available in the public domain, whether, whether do you own a house, do you pr pay property tax, do you pay car, do you own a car, do you own a bike? Right? Are you staying in a rented house or are you staying in your own house? All, all, most of this data is available in the public domain. And then what you buy online, your purchase data, what you, your social media data. So there are many digital footprints which you leave in the internet, which is good enough for me to get you using a, a data science solution. And the moment I take your data from the mobile phone, who are your contacts? Right? And then your SMS text, your um, uh, app usage, all those things with the machine learning, we can extrapolate and we can say that with the simi similar profile people are trustworthy and so you are also um, can be believed. You are also trust trustworthy, your credibility can be yes. Not not 100% but it is better than nothing. So that's how we do the alternate credit underwriting for these um, customers. <laughs> Uh, one more question in the chat board. Yes. Is AI on industry reduce the job opportunities? Yeah, so this is a big question. So I would say when the computer came um, 30 years back, you know, when I was uh, studying in uh, College of Engineering, Trivandrum, CET, that was the remember. I remember uh, when we were in the college, we used to have uh, the, the anti computer strike by the political parties. So you know that in the last 30 years, uh, whether the computer took away jobs or not, right? So the same way, any new technology will definitely take away jobs, but it's going to add more jobs. So, for example, when the computers came 30 years back in India or 25 years back in India, every office had stenographers, every office had pions. You go to a Sarkari office, you had a pion who is taking the file from one table to and putting it to the other table. That was his only job, right? All the Sarkari offices will be sitting on the different the tables in the in the different cabins and there will be pions who is carrying file from one office to one room to another room and he will be there will be pion who is carrying the file from one table to the next table right and then there were uh, every manager had a stenographer typist all those jobs lost but you know that the computer brought uh, many other jobs right so there are many other jobs came in so the same way artificial intelligence will take away many jobs many redundant jobs many jobs which are manually done which will be uh, move to the machines, but there will be many other uh, high-end jobs which will be created. So Gartner had a study two years back. Gartner says uh, uh, the, the, the number of jobs lost by artificial intelligence will be lesser. I mean, the number of jobs created by artificial intelligence will be more than the number of jobs which will be lost. Okay, so that's a prediction. But in any case, whether it's we lose or uh, gain, it's going to be a reality. It's, this is how artificial intelligence is, and this is where the society is moving. This is where the world is moving, whether we like it or not. So the, as the professionals and the, as the technologies engineers, I would, my suggestions for you guys is to up, upskill, learn the technology, and uh, upskill yourself, and um, get into the market, and uh, you, you can win the world. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another one question by a student. That is, uh, sir, which platform we can use for programming? Can we do this ML programming online? Yeah, see, yeah, machine learning, so basically you need a big data, right? So, Professor, our, our principal, uh, no, uh, Father Jason Ball, I know that uh, he's already building a data lake for Kochi Metro. So, th that's uh, the big data platform, right? So, there are even the cloud platforms are providing uh, 
big data where you can have any aws or azure or any of google cloud everywhere you can do that so you so depends on the size of the data you can have even on your own in your own data center you can build it on hadoop or many uh, big data platforms are there um, so you can uh, so so what we need is uh, data right so when you have a big data you need a big data platform where you can build a data lake and on top of that you, the machine learning and the modeling um, python or r these are the popular ones which people use so so we do we develop machine I mean, this uh, solutions in both the uh, most of them are done in python and then some are, we use r also so these are the two popular technology i mean languages uh, sir, oh, sir. Uh, another one question from our uh, respective principal yeah. what are the a tool that you are using on, on bank a are they cloud tools or in house tools yeah so so see, since this is a bank we have lot of uh, restrictions in terms of data security and data privacy um, so we our data science lab is in bangalore but all our data is in in our head office uh, office in a different country it's in malaysia okay so we have a data center so we so the government uh, the, the just like the reserve bank of india we have a central bank in that country which doesn't allow the data to be shipped to a public, public cloud so we cannot uh, since it is a bank data we cannot uh, we don't uh, because of this uh, restriction data privacy and security restriction the data is hosted on a on prem data center inside the bank premises so we we do not have approval to put it into a public cloud so even when we access from india all the personally identified ta data the confidential data are all encrypted and uh, we access it over uh, um, um, you know uh, vpn connectivity so that is because it is a banking then otherwise uh, for any other industry say for example a retail or um, any other industry we can have uh, the big data platform on uh, yeah it's a it's a hadoop framework it's a big data it's a oracle bda so it's oracle big data appliance so oracle has come up with this uh, uh, hadoop, it's a, so the building blocks are hadoop and uh, uh, the respective um, you know um, uh, the, the packages are there so we use spark spark is the hadoop um hive is the pr primarily use uh, hive for the database uh, queries so it's an oracle bda oracle bda uh, it's by supported by the oracle uh, sir another one question uh, from rashmi yeah. ji nayar can you suggest some new courses on this field for the students except traditional engineering courses yeah so i usually do lot of uh, sessions for this uh, in different universities so since you guys are all doing btech i would say don't uh, just go into some small courses after your btech so complete your btech don't uh, so after that i would say you do a post graduation in data science from a good university so there are whole lot of uh, data science courses so next week i'm uh, i'm doing a webinar webinar for iim kolkata so iim kolkata and iit karakpur has a um collaboration and they have a pg pdm course two year data science pg course that's excellent one iim has then ias indian institute of science has a data science pg course then triple it is there in bangalore they have a data science course so do a post graduation in data science two year course um i would that's what i would recommend so but there are many uh, small courses in the market which will just uh, take away your money you can do you no know, online courses correspondence courses one month course is there one one year course is there but i would i would not recommend for you because you guys are just uh, getting into the the market now and uh, spend two two years in a classroom course from a good university and uh, do that yeah so i understand so so jodi is starting a yeah i saw that so jodi is starting a btech in a yeah so even christ university bangalore has a uh, msc data science course so um, that's also good so i four months back i had done a session for them in christ university so their course their first batch is getting out uh, i think la this month so last uh, august itself they were 100% placed so data science course there are so many courses so you can get all these details so do a, do a two year pg course that's better yeah so i don't know from avishankar yes what is that pam pam that you mentioned along with chatbot Can can you repeat? Your voice was breaking. What is that PAM? That spam that you mentioned along with chatbot. PAM. PAM. 
no no i was talking about spam messages right so i didn't talk about the chatbot so i didn't talk about chatbot today so what i was saying is uh, uh, most of these companies banks and everyone you know they all spam you the customers right so they are doing promotional their camp the campaigns the problem is they are they will send you the you know right message at the wrong time to the wrong customer that's when it becomes spam if you read uh, your email open your email you will get uh, email uh, campaign from a bank asking for a personal loan so the, the message itself is not a problem the problem is that you don't want it now so then it becomes a spam for you so if i i i, I if, if i get a call in the middle of an important meeting that becomes a spam for me so from a bank's point of view that's not a spam but from a customer point of view it becomes a spam because you are getting a wrong message at the wrong time so what we have done is we identified the customers what is their interest what they want and then at what time you want and when you want and through which channel you want so that we do not we don't spam you okay so so it's a question of understanding the customer and understanding your interest and give you a personalized service so that's what we can do using the machine learning models so this is uh, ravi shankar yeah uh, can i ask a question directly yeah yeah go ahead yeah i have seen a chatbot in one of the slides uh, along with that uh, chatbots uh, i have seen the term pam uh, and i just wanted to know what exactly it is uh, i haven't asked anything about spam uh, mm-hmm. i think in the one of the slides where uh, kyc you know your customer was mentioned uh, in that uh, you know chatbots were uh, you know mentioned and along with that i, I have seen the term so uh, yeah. i just wanted to ask about that Okay, okay okay so i didn't okay i didn't present about the chatbot but the chatbot is something which commonly everyone is doing for a whenever you do a a solution or a, you get into data science chatbot is something which uh, everyone is uh, talking about and um, most of the it services company they build chatbots uh, which you will get it in um, you, know, you you go to a customer service um, online chat with a bank or any online shopping you go to amazon you will you get into the moment you log in you get a question and then it's a chatbot which is uh, giving you so it's a common use case in any any industry chatbot okay but i didn't present it uh, in the session today okay so oh, i think last so what what chatbot does is uh, it will uh, do you know it's an nlp right so it will uh, there are two type of chatbots so text to text to text is there or voice you, you know recogn- your voice recognition is there and then um, you know what are you right and then it will come up with uh, different uh, patterns and then take the keywords and give you the answer yeah sir uh, yeah. last question yes sir the blockchain mechanism can be used for security in ai application yeah but blockchain is an altogether a different technology but we can combine both uh, blockchain and uh, ai because both are complementary see blockchain is a digital it's a distributed ledger so it will it will give you the credibility to for any transaction so for a bank or for any international traders uh, blockchain can be used and then for uh, the data which is generated you can apply the ai machine learning models to come up with uh, um, uh, customer insight and, uh, and customer prof- uh, propensity everything so both are complementary you can combine depending on your business use case hi sir yeah this is my hi sir can you hear yeah sure yeah uh, yeah i just just asked this question thank you for the suggestion and i just ask you that in the industry currently this blockchain is using for that a application i just want to know yeah yeah so industry blockchain is used but it's not a replication of it's not uh, something to substitute um, a a a is different blockchain is different but what i'm saying yeah, is you can convergence yeah. yeah yeah you can convert you can yeah you can take together okay 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 so thank you thank you and thank you blockchain is a distributed ledger so it will okay okay keep your transaction yeah. credibility okay fine okay fine and and thank you thank you for session and thank you for the jodi engineering college and thank you all my friends sir so the, yeah thank sure. you for that yes sir uh, i think question session almost over uh, no other questions in the chat board Uh, i think we, it's a uh, time to conclude the session and uh, sir we are uh, happy to say that uh, jodi in jodi engineering college we are starting uh, two new branches uh, that is uh, in industry 4.0 revolution that is uh, artificial intelligence and uh, robotics so i hope uh, we can train more students uh, new era that is industry 4.0
Yeah, it's a really good. It's a good. It's a really good thing that uh, you know, the course is started. So congratulations to the principal and all the faculty. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, any other queries from any st students? Any feedback? Any comments from your side? Any participants? Yeah. So so session feedback. I would appreciate. Um, you can post it on my LinkedIn. Um, I passed on the uh, link to Binish sir. So. Yeah. I would appreciate if you can uh, now put your comments there so that I will know that um, how you split first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, we will share it to, uh, to the participants through the email, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. So that will help me to understand how it was useful and so I can improve myself if there is any area for improvement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we can go for a conclusion. Yeah, sure. So I invite uh, Manish Manoj, CSE student coordinator. To conclude the session, over to over to you. Thank you, Vipin sir. So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Matthew Joseph, our research person, for making us aware of the current trends in industrial artificial intelligence. The session was very informative, sir. Thank you for your valuable time. Next, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the management of my college, especially to uh, to uh, my principal, Father Dr. Jason Paul Mulderikil, for being a part of this event and for connecting us with the host, Mr. Matthew Joseph. I would also like to thank the HOD, uh, Father Dr. A.K. George, as well as the staff of the Department of Computer Science, Jodi Engineering College, especially Mr. Binish M., Staff Coordinator of CSI, and Mr. Fepsin Adish on Staff Coordinator of CESA for organizing this wonderful webinar. Next, I would like to thank all the wonderful participants who cooperated with us and provided a wonderful response to the event. I hope that we could see you all for all the future webinars from our side. Thank you all. I think uh, we could conclude our meet. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all. Yeah, so once again, thank you very much, uh, all of you, for listening. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, being with you and uh, sharing my knowledge. And uh, once again, I would like to thank the principal, Father Dr. Jason Polt, for giving me this opportunity and for all the faculty for the support and for all the students. I wish you all the best. And uh, I am sure that you guys will do wonders. And uh, you guys are at the right uh, path of uh, uh, human history where you can create wonders using artificial. So wish you all the best and uh, do well in your life. Thank you.